Hello everybody. Um, I guess let me know if you can hear me and see a cat that is trying to cause trouble. What? I brought a bribe here for you. Oh, if you stay there, you can enjoy catnip. So yes, this is the uh, energetic, um, mischievous, maybe crazy one. I don't know if her sister will, her sister loves that bed, so she might come and have a snooze. And now she's all whacked out. I don't know that that's going to improve the situation. But I guess we'll find out. All right. Nope, you're looking at the desk. <laughs> nope, no looking at the desk. Yes, she's super helpful. You're the most helpful. You're very, very cute, but you're not the most helpful. I can get that out of the view. <coughs> I will uh, ask for my husband's assistance if she becomes too frolicky. All right, so what am I gonna work on today? Um, Yesterday was St. Patrick's Day, and that seemed pertinent. Oh, thank you, Kiriniko. I think they're very pretty. Her nurse said, bip, 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 bip. We're having some problems with the don't go on the paint desk deal, though. Hi, those are claws. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, last year, the year before, I don't remember, but the video is going to be up on YouTube. Um, I talked about painting green, and there's an article on my blog that Queen Dee just shared the overall link to, and that article, I think, is called Going Green with Envy. Um, and it has samples of the colors I used and some tips and stuff like that. So if you want to know about green, I mean, I'll probably do it another day, too, because green's a pretty awesome color. Uh, but for now, we're going to, we're going to, well, okay, well, keep him a minute. Because when you think about St. Patrick's Day and leprechauns, what else do we associate them with? And then it came to me, gold, gold coins. So, which I, I've only painted a little bit. I don't paint a lot of um, metallic gold. So I thought I would give that a shot. So Mr. Leprechaun's going to go away. I have done it once though, and this took approximately 4,000 years, I think. Well, I was trying to get a mix, like it was a giant pile of copper and silver and gold coins. And then there's some gems in there and some weapons and other treasures for Rocky to enjoy. And I was painting him to go in a contest as well as for Ron, so I labored over him and the metallics for quite some time. I'm not sure it's showing up. There's a lot of purple in a couple of the spots, which can work well with gold, but we're going to uh, look at some color options. But first, let's talk about how, actually, let me put a coat on each of these so it can dry. And then we'll talk about how you can add, you know, what if, what if you have a different base and you want to put gold on that? Um, so it doesn't help you to have these pre-made bases, which I think are on the website. There's several different treasure hoards. I didn't see this one, but there's also one that doesn't have a picture that was showing up for me. So my guess is that that is this one. So I believe the, these are available, but I don't know for sure. Something similar is available, if not. I noticed um, that there is like a kind of prominent mold line on that cup. Because I'm thinking maybe I'll go back and... Oh, look. Everything in my life now comes free with cat hair. Uh, maybe I'll come back and work on the rest of these sometime. We'll just focus on gold coins for now. It would make more sense to paint the chest first, but... Am I the person who makes more sense? Probably not. There's also a little gold bar there, which is nice. Yeah, this one has... 
that remained is worth taking off, but I'm not going to do much more than that. If you can hear rustling, that um, kitty is now over in this, like, um, really beat up Amazon box. She likes sitting in a box, but she also likes biting a box. So she wants the flaps to be flappy. And then she sits in the box and bites the edges of the flaps in the corners. Or she'll just bite things around my room. I decided to give her a bite in box because otherwise other things get bitten. She's kind of got a thing about paper. It's weird. Actually, there are more piles in that direction, so we'll put it there. And I'm thinking about working on two of them to do kind of a colder color gold and a warmer color gold. But if you'd rather see me just focus on one and actually finish today, <laughs> even then. Even then, who knows? All right. So, people often recommend that you apply metallic paints over a darker matte color, and I think that that is excellent advice, so I'm gonna do that. I will pick out something for the cooler and something for the warmer. I mean, I don't think they have to be super dark. Hey, Zachariah. There was a brief kitty appearance. She might come back. I don't know. I'll just get a coat of paint on there so that can dry while we're talking about other things. Oops. Maybe I need to uncover my water pot for it to be usable. So I'm going to assume that this is just a very excellent treasure hoard that is all gold. Trust me, the other way is somewhat insanity inducing. So unless you really have a good reason, it's probably not worth it. But I figured gold coins were a good thing to look at because not only are they found with leprechauns, but most fantasy adventurers stumble into some gold coins at one time or another. I mean, I guess unless you have like a really, really, really super stingy GM. This is a nice warm reddish brown, and this is a color that I would be happy to use as um, a shadow color painting non-metallic gold. So I think it should work well as the base for a metallic gold. It's, oh, I don't know if I said, it's Minotaur hide. Um, I think mahogany brown is kind of similar in the core line. I mean, a, a color that I would use for a similar purpose from the core line. And that I have many times used as shading for, um, oh, there's lots of gold bars. Excellent. For non-metallic metal. In fact, there is so much gold, I'm going to need more of this Minotaur Brown. I will, um, <clears throat> but I didn't just pick these colors because they were ones that I like and have used before. I looked at some uh, reference that I'll show you in a minute. Zachary I am. I am making a dungeon and world composed mostly of mimics and treasure golems. The party will become numb from treasure piles to the point that I fully exorcism to attack all treasure from that point forward. I remember once um, 
in a game I was in, the GM gave us a substantial amount of gold, but it was in the form of two gold doors that were on this tomb that was in a very remote location, which I think we did manage to drag into town, but uh, then when we explained where they were from, the town slapped us in jail for desecrating the dead and stealing stuff. So, I mean, fair. We killed a vampire. They should have been happy about that. And he had expected the vampire to kill us, but getting down the mountains with the uh, doors ended up being the far more perilous activity because, I don't know, I find environmental hazard rules to be <laughs> more challenging than monsters sometimes. It's like, oh, please don't make me do a dex check or acrobatics or whatever. Even if I'm good at that, I'm likely to roll down the mountain. And that was actually, um, I think it was the last game session that we played in before I moved from Toronto to America. So partly the getting put in jail thing I think was a way to write me out of the game which is fine I don't know if I would also want to paint the goblet and the vase gold that would end up being like a lot of wool so possibly I should leave those for a future day when we can just talk about painting, dungeon dressing type things. Wow, so much more gold in this than I realized. But because gold is very textured, you know, I have a few bubbles. That's the warm one. Sakura, I am. I agree about the environmental rules. I can't imagine the weight of the doors. Maybe they were just gold plated and we had to actually like use skills to get the plate off. It was, it was a hot minute ago, so I might not remember. Kiriniko, I've been using minis of furniture in my games for years. The players were super suspicious about it at the beginning, but they were all relaxed about it now. Time to break out the mimics. Oh, that is... That is a long setup and would be awesome. There's like a rock thing in there. I don't know whether it's meant to be a gem. I think it is meant to be a gem. I mean, it's gonna get this brown color anyway. And I can revise my opinion later. So once I get this paint on, for those who might have come in a little later, I want to talk about how you can add coins, a few methods to use to add coins to your own bases that you might, you know, you might already have a figure with a built-in base and you don't want to cut it off. You just want to add a few coins. I meant to grab, I, I edited the pictures and then I forgot to uh, transfer those to my phone. Oh, this is, I chose wood stain brown for the cold, colder gold color base. Um, but if you go to uh, the Reaper store and look for Dragon Et, so Dragon E-T-T-E, -E, um, since he wasn't, you know, he's not a full grown dragon, I wanted to give him just a little mini treasure so he has like a pouch with some coins um, spilling out of it. And I did the coins with one of the methods that I will discuss. If you go look at um, one of uh, Michael Proctor's entries from the MSP Open, I think it was last year, so 2024, he 
added coins to a base the much harder way. And I'm, I'm, you know, you can't always tell if someone's crazier than they were before, but I think maybe just a little. He's just a little crazier after making and painting them all in great, you know, contest level detail. I should just, I guess if I did half the base in a cold gold and half in the warm gold, that would look weird. So maybe it's better I didn't do that. But I apologize that this is taking a minute. Ah, there's another gem up here. Maybe a few. suddenly just remembered something else I would have liked to bring over here and I don't think I have any close to hand. In fact, I'm not even 100% sure where I put them. Reorganizing is hard when you're older because then you can't always uh, remember what your new plan was. At least this is what I have been planning. So I'm just trying to pop bubbles before I put this aside to dry. Now, alas, I will not be demonstrating most of these methods for various reasons. Um, bed of the dead. Sakurai loves the mocking beast uh, beds that Reaper does. They are very fun. They were super vicious. Um, and has about 50 of the old metal Reaper treasure piles, yet now I'm starting to collect these freebies too. Um, Proctor can afford to be a little bit crazier. He's one of the more sane of us. Oh, that's that's a front. <laughs> and Kurinigo is telling us that there's a film called Bed of the Dead. So you can see um, quite a difference. I mean, okay, it's brown and brown, but this is warmer. It has more, you know, red in it. And this is cooler because it has less red in it. So warm and cool are always relative. If you're looking at the whole color wheel, you know, blue is cool and, you know, red and orange are, are warm. Um, but any given pair of colors you can look at and it's not always easy, but one of them is likely to be warmer or cooler than the other. So we'll look at these two mouse things. So this is what I was working on last week and the week before. So those videos are available for streaming. I was painting this blue cloak. Um, and then we compare it to, I wanted to bring this guy, I forgot to show the difference between this is a regular size mousing and this is one of the fun size mouselings. Um, so if we compare their, the colors on their heads, um, I would say this is the warmer one. It's got a little bit of green, so it's got a little bit of yellow where this one doesn't. It goes more towards purple, so it goes more on the cooler side of the color wheel. So that's an example with two blues. All right, so you want to make your own treasure. Well, coin treasure specifically. Um, do I have, I think black would be too much of a So a while back, I cleared out my craft stash and I was kind of over glitter and I was overly zealous and I think I got rid of the larger size glitter that works better for coins. But, you know, if you wanted to throw in some dimes or whatever. So now I will try to spread this out so that you can see they make little shapes. Um, maybe we even tried this camera that you can't see because I made it into cat bed viewing. There we go. That's going to be better. So... The larger glitter that's little circles is little circles. So it works great 
to make piles of little circles. And I wouldn't even waste it like making a whole pile, like especially if you have a hot glue gun, you could just make a little pile with hot glue or putty or something else. And then you just put this on the top of it for the coins. I mean, not that you don't get a whole lot of glare when you wear glare. But that, that is the way, if you, if you go look at that dragonette, that is how I added a few coins to the pouch. So it looks like, you know, the pouch got dropped and some coins are spilling out. And I think the pouch is from one of the adventuring accessories sets. The other nice thing about this larger glitter is that it doesn't as much drew the, um, <laughs> Kriniko says the cat is trying to destroy the glitter. Um, it, it's not quite as craft herpy-ish. Oh, I gotta go back to my other camera. Hold on. Um, so that's nice. It doesn't, it's a little bigger. It doesn't get everywhere the same way, especially the, there's at least one size bigger than this, which I think is what I used on the other guy. But th this was spared the purge because it was in my box of miniature supplies instead of the one that should have been. So the next two methods are kind of the same thing, just what material you want to use. I actually wrote down notes today. It's been a while. Um, so you can roll little tubes of green stuff, which I think is what Proctor did to make his gold, and then you slice it up with a hobby knife, which I surely have one right there. Unless a cat ran off with it or something. What's going on? Where are my hobby knives? Okay, I already got it out. I was more prepared than I thought. Um, I do not have a green stuff tube. I actually don't have the next option, but I have something that will work well enough for demonstration purposes, I think. So you can also buy styrene tubes uh, at the craft store. So this is in that section where they put um, like roofing tiles and just white sheets that architects and people like that used uh, to mock up buildings and stuff. But there's, there's a lot of cool textures and things that we can get there. So you can get like little rods like this, but they're round instead of um, these are beam shape. And I use so many of them. Zachariah has used polystyrene dowels. Uh, depending on where you live in the world, it will either be called uh, polystyrene or styrene or plastic art. And Evergreen is a company that makes them, and I forget the other one. All right, I'm gonna come over here again because I think we can get more close up. So basically, you take your green stuff rod or your styrene rod and you slice it to make many, many little coins. And that's, that's how you go crazy. Um, the advantage of that is you can make them the size that you want. Well, the putty has to be cured. So you make the, the putty roll. Zachariah was saying they don't squash like putty. You make the putty roll, you let it cure, and then you're slicing it off like you would with the styrene rods. Um, with the putty, you can make it the size that you want. And you can add texture to the sides, I guess. To, you can try to add like ridges, but I think you could try to do that um, with these as well. If you get like um, high grit sandpaper and you just drag it in a straight line across a flat piece of styrene, you can make grooves like wood, um, you know, the lines on, on wood paneling. So I would imagine you could do the same thing on the piece of round styrene to try to give the effect of little ridged edges on the edge of your coins, which is probably like way over the top for what we need to do, but just in case you want to be super over the top. Uh, yes, Plastruct. Thank you, Zachary. That's the other. So those are the two companies I've seen the most. Um, so those are, you know, kind of two methods, but the same method. Um, I would use a soft putty for doing that too. So I wouldn't use um, like Milliput or uh, I'm blanking on it. 
have some right here. Abe's epoxy. It's gold. Because um, it's going to be easier to cut up if it's green stuff and it's got a little give. Um, okay. What? So you could um, make a stamp. I have one that a kind sculptor friend made for me that is like to do little circles because unfortunately um, the end of a mechanical pencil is going to be too tiny. Too, too tiny. So this way you could have just your overall, you know, base of putty and then you pressing in the coins where you want them to be. So that is convenient if you can shape metal a little bit and we all end up with not amazing paint brushes after a while. But on a similar line, and the thing I forgot to bring over was, all right, so let's say, I, oh, I wanted to show this um, older metal base just to, you know, there, there's not like only one way or one size of doing coins. But let's say I had, um, you know, made this is just a pile of coins and I made that out of green stuff with my little stamp or something. Green user said Oilers work well too. So Oilers are little tubes basically, uh, but they come in a lot of different sizes and they're used for oiling watches and other machinery like that if you're like me and you're like, what is an oiler? Green user says that tool is an old brush with the bristles burned out. It's possible that green users is the kind friend who uh, helped me out with that. Um, Oilers are, they're nice for like rivets and stuff too. Or I guess like buttonholes maybe. But anyway, let's say I had, had used my uh, thing to make this as a pile of coins and I was basing a team and I didn't want to have to do that like eight times or something. So what I could do is take Green, more green stuff. So imagine this was made out of green stuff or epoxy scope or whatever. So I put Vaseline or some other release agent on it. Then I take green stuff and this time I would use green stuff because it's more flexible. Put it on there, let it cure, take it off. I mean, at least let it partially cure, take it off. And then you've now made yourself a stamp of the entire texture of a pile. So you could make a few different piles once and then make some texture stamps to do that in bulk. You know, this seems like information that Zachariah might need for making the dungeon where players will get tired of treasure. So where are we on these? That one's almost dry, so this one is probably dry. Um, there are possibly pre-made base stamps that you could buy. The company that used to make stamps with more like little things with seppuku and they closed down but i think basius has probably some tre like some floor thing that has treasure piles on them and you could use that in a similar way but you ha if you start with a positive you have to make a mold of the negative to be able to make more positives Cure Nico, my cats are really trying to make sculpting tools for me when they eat my brushes. Cool. The Shadow Raven, yes, they are helpful beasties for sure. Yes, I have had happy seppuku. Thank you, the Shadow Raven. Um, but they had to close down. Zachariah has seen some resin print stamps too. Oh, see, now here's how you get me interested in 3D printing things. If I can stamp little, like I'd love to have a little mold for dishes and stuff like that. Anyway, let us go to the gold. Okay, first, here's my cat being ridiculous. She's actually eating a miniature in this picture. I, I took it to taunt Bobby Jackson. Because he claims he likes cats. But I don't know if I believe him. Um, there we go. So I did my thing that I like to do. And I got some reference pictures. These ones are all from the Smithsonian. Um, this is actually like a little railroad guy on a pile of coins, which is adorable. And the, so those are from Unsplash, and the railroad one is from the 
Matthew Stern took up and took and set up the picture. Uh, William Warby did the pound coins and or are those the bullion coins? Yeah, I, I guess I didn't write things down as well as I thought. James St. John. I don't know. I'm allowed to use Unsplash things. I wanted to be nice and give them credit, but I did not take my notes as well as I should have done. So um, what I did was go through and sample different colors here. And you can see that, I mean, they're all brown and yellowy and stuff, but there's kind of a range. Like there's, uh, these are gold coins from various different countries. There's the Canadian one. There's a Canadian one. Oh, that might be the British one. That's a Canadian one. Um, that was South Africa, I think, the deer. So they're slightly different color just from the get-go. Um, because they're different golds. And it, it's like a nice little range there where the South African one is much warmer and the others are a little cooler. That's a bit of a warmer set of coins. And then that's a bit of a colder set. And it's interesting, I like some of them, you know, there's a number of colors that are kind of in the skin tone family, even, which I wasn't entirely expecting. So this, there's really, like that's as yellow as it got. I think there was like a creamier light tone too. I didn't take every, um, little thing, whereas there's plenty of yellow on that one, which is a big hunk of gold in the Smithsonian. And this is, this is even warmer. There's a little bit of orange in that though. But what's interesting here is I would say that both of these, because gold is metal, it doesn't do it as much as silver, but it does reflect. That's what makes it metallic looking. Um, it does reflect the environment. So some of the warmth in this, these two could be due to the pictures being on, you know, red and pink backgrounds. Whereas these are all very neutral backgrounds. So when you're making this decision, you can consider what else is in your scene as well as, you know, the nature of the gold. So I don't paint gold the same every time. Um, if, if I have a lot of like, really cool neutral colors. This is gonna stand out a lot if I used, you know, super warm gold like that. And then the reverse is true. It might look a little blah if I used like a very cold one because all those warm colors or cold colors elsewhere on the figure kind of evoke the idea in your mind of a certain lighting scenario. So when you make color choices that are different than that um, image. That's sometimes why colors seem like they don't fit. So while I do kind of have gold recipes for non-metallic gold, I don't always adhere to them slavishly. All right, so I did shake these, but I'm virtually certain they're gonna need to be stirred because metallics have the flake and they settle in longer. So we'll look at some of, I think these are all, all of these paints are currently available in the Reaper line. I tried not to, some of them are Pathfinder, but I tried not to pick any out that were, you know, special edition. So we've got a similar thing. These are probably similar in value, but this one is pretty cold. This one's kind of the middle and this one's very warm. I tend to like the 9-4 um, metallics better. They're, it's a newer formula. Um, I think Anne would probably recommend that as well. So unless I'm like being super specific about the color. And this is actually bronze and it does look fairly different. Well, I mean, it looks like my one picture, but I probably, probably like that greenier one better. I don't know what Valorous Gold is in the Pathfinder world, but they went with a somewhat different one for that. Dragon Gold is like just classic gold. 
Uh, Shadow Raven says, I see you also put a swatch over the barcode. Great way to gauge transparency. Yes. So when I'm doing the swatch, I try to just get as much on here as I can. So I make it really thick to get as opaque of a color as possible to see it at its, you know, if I painted enough, a few, enough coats of it, what it would look like. And then, you know, I wipe my brush off to have the amount of paint we would have to paint a miniature and do a swipe down the barcode. Krinico likes this greenish one. This greenish one or the... Yeah, that is them. Yeah, we'll use the greenish one on the cold. And maybe we'll just go like full out crazy bright on the... Yeah, this one's more greenish than that one. There was a rose gold, but it was um, like a special promo paint. So I did not bring that one over, even though I like rose gold. But I can actually tell looking at these, this one in particular. And matte paints will do this too. So you see all these bubbles. If you shake a paint and you see bubbles like that, it almost guaranteed means that there is something that's settled onto the bottom and you don't have all your pigment and other elements in there and you need to stir it and then shake it again. And I'm pretty sure if I reach down here, I will get a nice big clump of sludge. Oh, it's not too sludgy. It just needs to get moving in a little. So I usually try to scrape down the sides a bit. These are parts from windshield wipers, apparently. Someone very kindly gifted these to me after I said I wish I had something flat, like like a traditional painting, um, you know, a palette knife. Because you can get those clean pretty easily. It doesn't waste as much paint. You can get more paint back in the thing than with the, I think I've been using um, like plastic toothpicks. I found at the grocery store. Zachariah says they have one of those rose gold paints in Paint Club and it's awesome. It really is a lovely color. And let me check this one and then I'm gonna pop them both on the shaker thing for a minute. There are some nice goop for us. And this, this absolutely happens with metallic paints. I'm going through some of mine and finally giving them a tune-up. And I've been getting some of that. I hadn't got to the metallic scene. So I want to get all that goop out before I stir. And if things seemed really thick, I could add water or medium or something. Water is probably what I would add water only to, directly to bottles and then add other stuff, you know, on my palette. But then I am not someone who will, you know, if a paint's pretty far gone, I'm gonna go buy a new one. I, I don't want to risk chunkiness or weirdness on my figures or whatever, I'd rather just get a new one. So I'm gonna turn the sound off very briefly. Uh, Zacharias, or seriously says, the stir stick reminds me of metal coffee stirrers. Oh, I haven't seen those. I'm a tea drinker. Th th that sounds like a great option for, um, if you don't have any windshield wiper bits around. Zacharias uses palette knives with base textures. It's worth getting a cheap palette knife at one of the craft stores if you use base texture paste very much. Uh, gray mustard. You could add some medium or flow improver. I could, but I would prefer not to mess with the proportions of stuff in the bottle. Um, even when I add water directly to the bottle, and I don't bother to do this like in general very often, but I use um, filtered, what's the, the water that they, they've steamed and it doesn't have anything in it. Apparently my brain isn't working that great today. If, if I thought stuff had got real out of, no, I don't, I never really add medium. 
or anything else directly to the bottle. Distilled. Thank you, Kiriniko. Yeah, I have a big bottle of distilled water that I use just for messing with my paints because our water is like so hard. Things just build up on everything, so I don't want that in my paint. All right, so we've got our warm and our cool colors. You notice that I'm not using the um, wet palette today because I think that... I don't know. I don't... I don't think that metallic paints like it. I think, and they, it doesn't really seem to keep them in good condition that much longer. So I'd rather just dispense more as it dries out and have them nice and fresh. They're a little, a little trickier. Gray Mouser, Reaper paints last a long time, so I don't generally do that with them, but GW, I pretty well have to. It's too thick to begin with. Well, I, I have had Reaper paints that got pretty chunky and it's like it doesn't it's not uniform it doesn't matter if you bought this set so all those bottles should be from the same you know production run of either the paint or the bottles just sometimes there'll be a bottle that gets drier way faster than the others and if there is a rhyme or reason to it I have not figured it out but every Every year or two, I like to just check them all. And I usually pop the top off like I did just now because stuff will get stuck up in the dropper bottle so it'll feel fine when I shake it, but then the paint might be goopy when I dispense it. So I, I do go through the whole thing. I like shake it, I dispense it, I pop the thing and check. It's a whole process. So just for curiosity's sake, I will put some of this straight on to where I didn't add the darker brown. And you can see how it was worth the time that it took to add that darker brown. I might still need another coat of this. We'll see if I can get away with just one. Um, but it looks way more gold already. I can't remember, um, I know Michael has mentioned his favorite colors for doing, you know, the matte colors for various types of metallics, but I cannot remember off the top of my head what they were. One's kind of a greenish color. Oh, it's already treasureful. So ha have, how many, you know, bases like this, or if you could done dioramas, is anyone else out there cut up a million little rods and then painted a little a million little coins and lived to tell the tale? Crows and Bones, my favorite Reaper metal is Skeleton Key. That is a good one. But when I was thinking about leprechauns and their gold, I was realizing that I have not actually painted a lot of gold metallics. So it would be fun for me to come and try to figure out how to do that here. So you all can watch me. Kiriniko, shout out for my JW bottle of white scar that was solid before I opened it. The guy in the shop just sighed when I took it back. Wow, yeah, white will dry out pretty fast. I think it's the containers, because I got some of the old style ones when I first started painting, and then they switched, and the old style ones lasted way longer than the new style ones. But I have a very strong preference for dropper bottles, so did not replace them when they dried out. Because also one of them was, it was like very quickly after. I don't think it even made it into until my, uh, you know, paint maintenance. And I'm like, well, that is complete nonsense. And I will not be supporting the nonsense with further purchases. But 
But that was even before they changed all the, you know, they did a, they did one change of the line, but then they did that big one a few years back where they changed a lot of the names and stuff so they were copyrightable. Which, you know, I, I kind of, well, trademark, trademark. I kind of get, I'm not going to yell about that. I actually am amazed sometimes that people will, this happens a lot with board games, but I'm sure other things too. Like there's a board game uh, on Kickstarter right now called Flow, like Ice Flows. And that's it. It's just called Flow. It's like, um, if I put that into Google, an awful lot of things come up. Like, I feel like you need to put two words together that don't normally come together or have a slightly funky spelling or something like that when you make a product or a web page or whatever so that people who know about it can just do a search and find it. But, you know, maybe I'm crazy that way. I mean, I understand legacy companies but that people are still, you know, coming out with brand new products where this has not been considered. It seems not very internet savvy to me. I mean, probably it would have been sensible for me to dry brush over the undercoating, but there are multiple ways to do this. Could I, maybe I could do that on this one instead of this method. Zachariah likes making a lot of different coin colors and tries to combine pre-made treasure piles versus making them, but I have made some very laborious. Um, and there's some more discussion about inefficient uh, paint pot design. I did like uh, red grass came out with a little like stand thing that you could put a couple of ink or paint pots in or like contrast or whatever so that you would be much less likely to inadvertently tip them over and that seems like a pretty good idea. I suppose you could use stuff like the, you know, you could kind of wedge them down with poster tack or something. But we all get in the groove of painting and then you don't think about stuff like that. All right, so that's already looking pretty luxurious. Is skeleton key a darker color? Um, I'd say it's kind of in the middle, isn't it? But I might be misremembering mis mis and I did not bring that color over so I can't check. So we'll let this dry a bit and then see if it seems like it needs a touch up anyway. That is a nice color, I like that. That is the dragon gold. And maybe it's the dragon in me that likes that. So over here, I think this stuff has already come out of suspension a little, so pardon the noise. You don't know life until you get the adrenaline surge from knocking over a bottle of Badab Black on your over your high elves. Ugh. Now, I only had two really noticeable spills back with Reaper paint pots, and this was me being clumsy, not the pots. Um, I poured out like a third of my bottle of pewter, but I laid stuff down on the table, and I actually was able to get some of the paint back in the pot, so it wasn't that big of a disaster. But the far worse one was uh, I was doing my paint maintenance, and I'd added water to um, the bottle, which was some kind of blue. And it tipped over before I had shaken it. And that was really not great for the rug. Like I tried so hard to um, wash that out of the carpet. And after an hour or so, I was like, well, I guess there's just a big blue spot 
and the carpet in this room now. This is officially the paint room. All right, so I said I would try to dry brush this one. But now I have to find a couple things. All right. Sorry, the desk setup gets tight when I am filming. And I need a brush. We can probably use something a little bigger since we're only doing gold coins right now. And I have to admit, I have not dry brushed with these. So I think I'm going to use the Army Painter and not risk my Rosemary Company that I had to get, you know, sent from England and stuff. Uh, Zachary was asking whether, or seriously, was asking whether the um, High Elves could be rescued by dunking and... Um, Kriniko says, yes, threw them into my paint water jar, which overflowed and caused a bigger mess. But if it saved the miniatures, I mean, that that's well worth it. So I don't want this brush to be completely dry. So I'm dipping in the water and then making sure that there's not like excessive water because we don't want. And the minis were saved. I'm glad that that story ends better than some of our hobby Hobby incident stories do. If you ever ask a group of hobby people to tell all their uh, hobby knife stories, it's a persuasive argument not to ever cut things. I think my cat is snoring. See, the coins are so fine that I don't know. Well, let's compare. Yeah, I guess, I guess that's working. Probably going to be better than the wash, but we'll find out. I think she realized she was snoring. I know, and I wish she'd come and snooze here, but apparently she would rather sit in a beat-up old Amazon box that she's bitten a lot of paper off of. Like she's some kind of sad homeless kitty. Instead of a kitty that lives in a house with like 17 cat beds or something insane. Because Corbin's one of these cats. He'll be like super into a place. He'll be like, just, he like lives in a spot. And then it's like he forgets it exists and he goes over to some other's place. So just when we're like, ah, eh, we should probably get rid of this one. He doesn't care about it. He'll be like, no, it's my new favorite. I love it. Because we got him this nice cushy bed to replace his cardboard box that is significantly bigger than that one's cardboard box. Um, and he loved his cardboard box. But then he was like, oh, comfort. Yeah, that's great. I like that. But then recently, he's gone back to the cardboard box. It's like, okay. You know, we got like a pillow over here. And it's all comfy and snuggly and it's a dog bed, so it's big enough for you. The little kittens sit in it. They look ridiculous. Okay, they're not kittens, but they're kittens to me. They're also little to me, given my basis of comparison. is a big 20-pound guy. So I might still give this a wash, but that was probably a better approach. See, we're learning things. Now we'll compare. We already have more. Um, oh, well, let me get some water in this brush before Dunky Paint gets right in there. I would say that there's notably more definition in these ones than this one. But now let's put a wash on this and change that. Assuming it's dry, which is hard to tell. Actually, I'm going to give it just a little bit more um, and see a few places that look patchy that are on the top. So they are places that shouldn't look too patchy. I 
But yeah, I have um, on occasion, on many occasions, just painted straight metallic rather than doing the undercoat thing. And I think that I should do the undercoat thing. I mean, like I have gray primer or something. It's not going on straight. Well, I don't know, I'll paint it on straight plastic. Do. But I think the undercoat is worth the time and then the undercoat with dry brushing is actually pretty effective for coins. All right, we'll let that dry and I will pick a lighter color or mix a lighter color to add a bit to this. And let's return to the options. That is not a lighter color. So I've got this new gold, but that that's like super yellow compared to the greeny one. As a mix, it might work. And then I brought over um, Shining Mithril and Pearl White to make lighter versions too. Sometimes people just use light silver colors. Um, Let's, let's mix these two together and see what happens. Well, that's the original. Gray Moser, I'm debating that very thing for a treasure dragon that I sprayed completely red. Should I repaint the coins black again first? Um, I mean, you could try just doing a black wash in that scenario. Maybe that would be enough in the crevices to do the job without having to repaint everything. I only had two of these, so I can't test another theory. I might test additional colors because I brought this guy out because um, looking at a couple of the reference pictures of the, you know, gold in its natural state, it was attached to other stones and stuff. Um, and I thought that that might be an interesting way to paint something like a stone golem or some other stony creature. Um, but then I thought maybe it would be more interesting if I had several of them and we experimented with different, you know, using purples and greens and different things like that. I don't know where my mixing brush is. All right, let's see if there, there, there's one that's a mixing brush. All right, so let's see if this makes a color. I don't know if it seems that much lighter than that one, so I'm not sure that's worth doing. Let's try with the other two options. So I forgot last time I did this to make a note, I think. So we're going to do the Shining Mithril in that one and the Pearl White in that one. And we did use these not too long ago, so I'm going to cross my fingers and hope that they aren't gunked out. Shadow Raven, my pure, my pearl white became pearl rock. Ugh. That does seem a little bit icky, doesn't it? But we'll just add some water and call it good. Nico, my favorite human keeps on asking me if I want a nice carpet for a new my painting desk because it looks too plain. Oh, that's a lot of pressure. Yeah. Plain is cleanable. Well, that one's a little goopy too. So my assumption that these would be fine. I suspect there is a little bit stuck in the nozzle of both of those, but I'm not going to worry about it. We'll get the reliquary gold is the greenish gold we've been using. And see if we can get... Ooh. That's the other thing you do with old paintbrushes is condemn them to just be mixers. 
Yes, I feel like that is a better lighter color. That might almost be too light, but we'll see. Interesting, because the last time we did this, I felt like there was a fairly big difference between, I mean, not, you know, huge, both lighter colors, but there was a notable difference between the silver and the pearl white, and here I don't really see as much of a difference. So I'm just going to turn one into an in-between. But the last time I did this, I was um, doing colored metallics. I'm just adding this into more. Don't want to have the highlights looking too chunky. And I let water sit in here because the paint is I don't have my little paint scrubby thing on the desk. So I usually just, these things will stay wet a long time. I usually just fill it with water before I put it aside. So I don't have to clean it too much, but I do need to clean it enough that we can, that's it, you can see the green in that gold. Because it's just the pigment and not the There's some of the shiny. So I don't have to be fanatical about this because I'm painting in the same color family. I just want to, for the sake of the brush more than the paint. All right, let's start with this one. Let's see if we need some more. Just getting the excess off. Feels pretty wet, actually. That brush, I think the brush is too wet, so I'm just gonna squeeze it. Yeah, there's so much of that green, greenish water coming out. I think it was too wet. So dry brushing is easier in terms of application, but it has its tricks. Just like uh, layering or wet blending or whatever for preparing your brush. Wait, no, that's the wrong one. No, that is the right one. Okay, I didn't want to accidentally get my warm gold and make it not warm. Keep more to like tops and edges. I suppose I could switch to a smaller brush, but I don't think I will. I do not know where the where the other kitty is. She normally comes and naps. She maybe she's on the bed sometimes. She has her afternoon on bed. Afternoon nap on the bed. Where's your sister bed? I hear you talking to me back there. I don't know, maybe I could have gone straight to the brighter color. Let's find out. What's going on over there, crazy cat? You're talking to yourself. Oh, maybe that was still a dream. Wow. Sometimes they chew in their in their dreams. You know, I guess they're imagining catching the mouse or something. Although I'm pretty sure neither of these two are capable of catching the mouse. They'd try, but I don't think they'd succeed. All right, so I will do, I'll leave this part 
for now. So I'll just do inside the chest and around the edge and then we can try to compare and see if we felt like it made any difference. made a difference there because I put too much on. Yeah, I think it, I think I probably should have switched the smaller brush just to not cover over too much of that original cool color. But that's, that's not terrible. We can add a little things. Uh, the bot is telling us that the 90 day painting challenge number one is here. Go to uh, woobox.com slash 5dpdwd. I'm reading that out for the benefit of people who watch this on YouTube. <laughs> Kiriniko, there is much interest in the kitty trips from this end. I never really heard her make this. She is so asleep. She's very asleep. <laughs> she does chatter a lot when she's awake, but that's not usually what it sounds like. All right, so now I think we need to start with a wash on this one. And that Minotaur hide was such a nice color. I'm just gonna go with that. Hey, Kodiak. I'm working on gold in honor of Yesterday being Leprechaun, Leprechaun's favorite day with their little pots of gold. Just go ahead and use some wash medium. And actually, if I'd wanted to thin these out very much, which you can do for like the highlighting stage if, if it's too potent, um, you should use medium. I would just go ahead and use the brush on sealer or the gloss sealer if you wanted things to stay very shiny. Um, it will hold the metal flakes in suspension better. Well, there's some matting agent. We were talking about matting agent uh, last week. There's some that stuck in my cap and turned into little chips. Wow, it is very stuck in there. Probably because of that matting agent. All right, we might just have to do this the old fashioned way. Yeah, it's all gunked up in there. Oh, it's all gunked up in there too. All right, so clearly I have not taken care of this, which like the metallics will tend to settle out quicker like that because the matting agent is heavier. So we will just use the homemade version of brush on sealer and water. I can see the mixing balls having engaged there we go so this is a matte paint that i'm using because um i'm cool with the shadow areas being matte in fact i want them to be matte so that the the highlight areas essentially are going to be the metallic and really stand out and shadows should kind of recede and It also gives me some control over things rather than just the lights. Put that one aside so I don't accidentally coat it in a wash, which I guess I should test. I was talking about testing these. Mm. Do 
do I want to add just a little drop more? I don't think so. This isn't a super dark color. I mean, it's dark. It's that, but it's not like black or something. Now, what I don't usually do a lot is try dabbing stuff off the upper surfaces. And these may just be too fine for that to be very effective. I mean, the texture is very fine. It was nice for that gold bar, though. I'm doing my thing where I'm kind of trying to split it up by regions so that if the if it started to dry and left a line here you would not really see that line because it's at a natural break point so this way hopefully I'll avoid that look where it like on the top of the coins like that one right there and it's up with a little round dot that wouldn't really a coin probably wouldn't look like that at least it didn't in any of our pictures that we looked at so. I'm going to take that bit off there because that, this is more of a natural break point. This is more important um, probably with non, you know, just when you're painting with matte paints. Um, the shimmer of the metallics tends to confuse the eye enough that people don't see, you know, blending lines or wash marks or whatever as much as they do on matte paint. But it's still good practice because I do still forget to do that sometimes. And I'm painting more important things. So anything you want to make sure you try to do more of, it's good to do it consistently and have a lot of repetition. Build that. Uh, yeah, Kodiak was asking what these are. Um, there are, are several different uh, treasure hoards up on the Reaper store. Uh, I didn't see this one in a quick glance, but there's one that the picture wouldn't load for me, so I suspect it's probably that one. But they're, they're all kind of similar ideas. I don't know if you can still get this one. Probably not, because that's a hunk of metal. I have no idea what it was originally called. I'm Drew Williams sculpted it. I know that. But the coins are much smaller here too. Which can only increase the agony of painting them. But yes, I was casting around in my mind for something I had with gold coins. And I don't think I... Well, I, I'm sure I do have a copy of um, Christine Van Patten's Leprechaun. I painted one for Reaper, so they have the one I painted now. But I'm pretty sure that somewhere I have a copy because I like to collect the holiday miniatures. But there was that whole somewhere thing, and I was like, you know, thought of this last night. 
I was like, what could I do other than green at St. Patrick's Eve? So this is just a makeup sponge. Um, and then these, because it's acrylic paint, the edges are not going to stay. Um, they're going to harden up and it's not going to be absorbent anymore, but you can cut them off and use this for quite a time on one miniature. And they're, they're very inexpensive. Kodiak. I was wondering what they look like. The images have been messing up for me recently. I didn't have a lot of problems when I was searching last night because I, I did some searches for like treasure and gold and coins and various things to try to spark my memory if there might be other miniatures that I wasn't thinking of. Um, ah, that's why I wear painting shirts and do not want a nice rug under my painting area. Poor mermaid Sophie. Oh, I already had paint on her. This is not her first time watching me flail about. Yeah, I don't know if that sponge thing would work as well on that paint, but I like how I can get rid of those little circles on the top of the coin. I don't know what to do with that. And I would wait for it to dry fully before I did, so, like, so this section is dry. Go back and see if there are places that, you know, that wash traveled out of or that I pulled it out of. I mean, depending on how much effort you wanted to put into something like this. All right, so that's the warm one that is now looking even warmer. And that's the cold gold. Cold gold. So the cold gold, I dry brushed over um, a darker base coat, which in this case was wood stained brown. Um, and then this one, I painted the gold as a complete coat and then did the wash. Uh, and I feel like we could probably use a little more definition. Well, let's compare the same size. Use a little more definition on this one still. So maybe you can't escape the wash. I probably should have done both. I don't know. We might have to do the highlight again. Who knows? But I think that I do want to put a wash on of that wood stain brown if I can find it. Oh, I had, um, this is probably too light, but non-metallic gold shadow was almost an exact match for one of the colors that I pulled out on the photos, which for those who came late, uh, I will show briefly. So I grabbed some photos. These are from the Smithsonian. These are from Unsplash. Uh, and then I was looking for colors. Mostly shadow colors because I, you know, we have the metallics for the other part. Um, and there, there was kind of a mix of, you know, warm browns and cooler ones and with the green. So I, since I ended up having two bases, I thought it would be fun to try one of each. I definitely don't think I've painted this kind of metallic very often. I think I have painted the warmer one occasionally. But usually things that are, you know, fine detail. I prefer to paint with non-metallic metal, but that would also be uh, a crazy making amount of work on that. Plus I thought it's good to practice with things that I don't do a lot. Especially on stream so that if, if and when, if and when I mess up, you all can enjoy them. Maybe I 
will cut a part of my sponge off because this is somewhere I had like ink or something. And those sharp corners were definitely helping. Oh, well, I'm in my tool drawer. I want to share these. If anyone uh, has hand problems or you have a family member that has hand problems, these are Fiskars. Uh, and they're kind of the scissors, once you take the safety off, they're like spring loaded and they have really nice big handles and you can push with your palm more than your fingers. Uh, it's just, it, it's so nice. I have a lot of finger pain and stuff. Um, and I, I, I was kind of skeptical. I'm like, all right, I'll try them, whatever. And I was really impressed. And the, like you would think maybe you don't have an, enough control. And I don't know if I could do like really fine cutting that you would do with like nail scissors or something. But I certainly have a decent amount of control for just every day. Um, paper cutting purposes. But yes, if you know someone who has arthritis or some other situation that aggravates their hands, I can recommend. And I'd watched a video from someone, I think from the Arthritis Society or something, who was testing them out and commenting. That gave me confidence to figure it was worth a shot. I do feel like because of the cats and stuff, I have to be super paranoid about making sure that I don't, you know, run off somewhere without putting that little safety back on. I don't know, do we think it's helping? Is it maybe not quite dark enough? I think it's maybe not quite dark enough. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of walnut brown, which isn't a particularly warm dark brown. I think she's still asleep. That's weird. She must be having a really good dream. Probably she's chasing all the mice that we show her on the YouTube, YouTube cat TV. I have suspicions that this paint was thinner at the top. Oh, maybe not. All right, I thought walnut brown was more potent than that. Now I'm going to need to add a little more water, I think. Yeah, I feel like I should start um, sharing helpful life tips I've learned, like the, the scissors and stuff. I feel like I should make Facebook posts or something. Because here's one that I would never have thought about when I was, you know, moving out of the house for the first time, finishing up at college and stuff. It is very helpful to have a couple or more plain white towels available that are not for regular towel use. Um, but when you have spills or uh, if you clean your carpet, that's how I ended up getting them is we bought a carpet cleaner. And in the instructions, they recommended that if you were gonna have to walk on the carpet before it dried, that you could put down these plain white towels and because they're bleached they don't have any dye that's going to leach into your carpet while it's wet is why they need to be wet but if you're the other things we've used them for is you know people spill things on the couch or I, like water it, it takes such a small amount of liquid to make like a disaster mess that um we have found it very handy to have these instead of just paper towels you can get get more done more quickly instead of just paper towels. No, I don't know. It is darker, but I don't know if I like the color as much. Oh, 
like because it doesn't have that little I don't know eh, we'll go with it I don't want this you know I don't know if this color looks a little bit like tarnish which doesn't happen to go not sure if it's massively different on the camera I mean okay it's not massively different to my eyeballs but there is a difference no I think maybe I do like the darker cooler one probably getting a better nap today because it's been um, spring break here was last week and our neighbors uh, I think have you know children and grandchildren that come home and they have an additional dog when that happens and then the kids run around and they rile up the dog and the dog riles up the other dog and there's just a lot of noises that the cats will stop and pay attention to but now it is to a regular volume and just our sports car neighbor that cats don't really care about but makes me crazy I get I mean I'm not gonna harsh on someone else's mellow if that's what you enjoy is just revving up and down the street I guess way for you but he even got a motorbike too like he already had this fancy lime green sports car that I'm sure was not inexpensive to purchase and then he also got a motorbike man he just like it's like we live near a place where people come from all over to go drive in the mountains on motorbikes and maybe sports cars I don't, I don't think so but um, I'm sure there are nice scenic view places that you could go Car as well and I don't think he goes to those I think he just goes around the neighborhood so it's like ugh, they're very noisy and she's snoring again this is hilarious because normally it is very difficult to get her to just settle down Unless she's cuddling up with her sister. And then sometimes it's less cuddling and more, I don't know, competitive bathing or something. It's like they're being passive aggressive and they're not actually being snuggly. They're trying to get the other one to get annoyed and leave. I mean, I'm probably uh, personifying it too much, but there's this one bed, it seems like they kind of fight over that way. Oh, no, we already did that. sponge that uh, I'm glad I found these I didn't even realize they had these gold bars in them and that is cool I could have got pictures of gold bars but realized interestingly places like Unsplash um, didn't seem to have any of the you know in the wild natural gold pictures like the Smithsonian which I guess is you know probably regular people can't afford that sort of thing oh but that was the one picture I wanted to show you because this is sort of wild if you did ever like if we ever do the little stone monster as if he's got gold veins in him you can do that without giving your players a whole lot of treasure because here's a giant rock and here's the amount of actual gold that came out of this rock. So, it, it'd be like my doors. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Zachariah, I am. I heard something wrong, so I imagined Corbin driving a motorcycle in the mountains. It was epic. Corbin with his paws on the handlebars. <laughs> that would be epic. He is a very traditional cat in the sense of not wanting to go fast. All right, so is this dry? I do feel like I should go over it just a little, but maybe I will break out the smaller, the smaller dry brush and see if we can not go into the crevices quite as much. So that was for people who came in later, the uh, base of this was the dragon gold. Well, okay, I painted Minotaur Hide, and I painted Dragon Gold over that, and we did a wash with Minotaur Hide. Now I'm doing more Dragon Gold, and then we're going to put some new gold highlights on top of that. Is my plan, anyway. Then I'll see if I feel like it would be fun to fool around with some other colors, like on the rocky. Which I will show in just a minute. take Corbin to the vet um, my husband sits in the back seat with the cat carrier and sometimes we'll even let him out and let him kind of huddle on his lap because he does not love the car ride he's like what's happening cats are not meant to go this fast and then he's mostly fine at the vet they find him very charming so they suck up to him and give him treats, and he's fine. He didn't mind his shot or anything. So that's the new gold, which I do not like as a starting point for a color. Um, you can see that it is pretty transparent. And I think the, the yellow, I don't know, it's just, it's not... It's not enough. It's too light. Um, I mostly found this out because I think I did a speed paint once where that was the color they had picked for the gold metallic and I like really, really hated it. As the only thing, as a highlight color, it's great. as we will hopefully soon discover. I've got so much gold on my hand now, I'm having trouble seeing the gold. But maybe that's just one of those weird things I have opinions about.
I mean, I, I think you can see how it's not going in the wrinkles. I'm not recommending you do this. I'm just explaining why. Do I want to go even lighter? And I feel like I do. So we'll get the silver. So that was shining visceral, actually. And this is kind of like, there was a special edition color champagne that I think would work for this. Um, but I was trying not to bring over anything that was, you know, not currently available. So I wanted to mix my own. Hello, you woke up. Nope, that's not the right one. Let's see. Let's see if, nope, you're not visible because you're on the floor. Come up here. You have more catnip. Or is somebody making you dinner right now? I think somebody's making you dinner right now. I don't think I could get the camera to look at where she is. She's blocked by things on my desk. Hello, crazy. What's up? Yeah? Okay. Kevin's making your dinner right now. There it is. I heard it hitting the floor. all my nice warmth. Alright. Call that good. It's a little shadowy in there, but I think I can work with it. Cuniko says all the little squeaks. They are so squeaky, these two. It's hilarious. They just sound so tiny. Kuniko hopes that uh, Zachariah's vision include a little aviator scarf on Corbin. I would love if he were an aviator scarf. So I think it's probably a divot, but I'm gonna see if I can put a little more, you know, if it's just lack of paint coverage. Cause it was just bugging me. You know how metallic it is when you move things around in the light, then you'll see stuff like that. And it won't be great. All right. Now does this one need a little TLC? Maybe just a little. Sometimes when I get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, Tabby will come running up with the little squeaks like she's giving me the news report of everything that happened since I went to sleep. And then you'll crawl up me while I'm trying to go to the bathroom and it's really not very convenient. That chair is not a normal chair. Thank you for bringing the smell of uh, cat food in here. Come on. Do you want some more cat meat? Mm. You're so sleepy still. Come here. Shh, shh, shh. Come here. Yeah, come up here. There you go. No? You're not gonna jump? Do you want me to help you? Come on up so everybody can see how cute you are. Oh there you go. Smell the catnip. 
Nope. Okay. <laughs> they were so cooperative that first day, and now they're done with me. So, like, we were convenient. That's not very cat. We can't do that. Take that back. Oh, now she's drinking a bunch of water, I guess. After, after the dinner. She wants to drink a bunch of water. Oh, this is reliquary gold, which is pretty neat color, actually. I haven't painted a lot of greeny gold, and I think it's pretty cool. Very shiny. I mean, kind of a more, you know, if I was trying to do a really sinister environment, I think I would, this would be a good gold for it. Where this is, if you want to lull the players into great piles of treasure. It's, it seems warm and inviting. So the lesson I learned is dry brushing the metallics on is probably more efficient and does leave some of the undercoat when you have something super textured like this. But it's, you're probably still going to have to do the wash. And we'll get that one just a bit of a lighter color. It's a bit, bit too much of a lighter color. There's a, one of those door stopper things near the um, water bowl, and apparently she's decided that that's fine. That seems like a thing you would do, Teddy. Tabby stands for trouble. Actually, it doesn't. It's uh, about four other things, though. See, it's the, the default character name in Baldur's Gate 3 is Tav. And then V is the character name in um, Cyberpunk, both of which my husband... I mean, I played Baldur's Gate too. I'm going to get around to Cyberpunk. I just haven't got there yet. husband liked that it sounded like tabby when she's not a tabby. I don't know why that amused him. I feel like there was something else. Bye, crows and bones. See you another time. And then it turned out to be a thing we didn't know, because that's a character name in... One of Jim Butcher's Allura series, apparently. So I guess I'm gonna have to listen to that. Yeah, I like that one a little bit highlighting there. All right, now we can compare. I guess we'll, I was doing the warm on the left usually. And maybe this is too warm, I don't know. It's pretty warm. Maybe I should have dialed that uh, you know, added just a little bit of walnut brown to the thing. But sometimes it's, you know, context. Like, without the other one, does it look too much? Hmm, I don't know. And then for comparison, I had mentioned Rocky and showed him at the beginning. Uh, now, this base was painted to look like there were copper, silver, and gold in there because I wanted to make my life difficult, I guess. It was the only conclusion I can reach. Because they're already sculpted in lots of little gems and things to distinguish 
So it's, I don't know, it's a bit of a mishmash, but this is real metallics because I otherwise would have been there for even longer. But I put a lot of like purple and stuff. There's some um, oxidation on the coppers. But purple works well with gold, usually, especially this warm one, but probably both of them. And maybe I'll just play around with that a little bit to show you. So I've got burgundy wine and royal purple. And I guess I can even bring over like just a purple purple for some reason. not gotten to purple yet in my painting inside or something. I was kind of leaving it for later because I like purple. It would console me after the endless sea of brown that I've just waded through. I mean brown is very useful and I'm not complaining about having a lot of browns but holy crap it was a lot of browns. But I reorganized them in a way that I think would be much uh, much more efficient. Ah there's there's chai. I figured out about the catnip. This is the kitty that was nice and slept with us last time. And maybe she'll enjoy some catnip and do that again. Is it not enough catnip? There's someone in the blue bed, too, as I think she's about to be here on our own. <laughs> it's not a, an amazing camera angle, but. She is super fastidious. She grooms herself, she grooms her sister. I mean, her sister sometimes returns the favor, but Tavi is like very, I mean, Chai is very motivated to look pretty and be fancy. All right, well, I'm gonna switch back to the boring miniature, but we're sure gonna have Cat in the side thing, because the only thing on my, here, I'll look at it briefly, the only thing on my palette is I added these purple washes. And I, I almost feel like I want to add a little blue to that one before putting it here. But I'm trying to look for someplace kind of inconspicuous so that if this is dumb, I can discontinue it. Maybe that is too thin. But you know my rules. I always like to be too thin than too thick. Arrow Wiz 130. That's a great uh, little emoji. Oh, that catnip's kicking in, isn't it, my friend? I'm trying to decide if it needs a little blue. Well, I don't know that it does. Oh, where's my, where's my sponge? What am I doing with my hand? about it on the 
bars of gold, the parts that are facing further away. And I see that now I need to put my highlight color on this one. So this is less of a wash. I mean, it was just now, it was more of a wash and that's not what I wanted. And a bit more of a glaze because I'm trying to be pretty targeted and keep it off the upper areas more. So to me, the main difference between a wash and a glaze as far as like technique or whatever goes is how much you have on the brush more than the consistency of the paint. but that is one of those terms that different people in our hobby might use in a slightly different way. So I don't know about the purple on that one, but let's try it over here. Maybe even try the lighter purple. I think we need to go with the color contrast and I need to get green out. I think it, you know, if you compare that shadow to the side over there, it's a little more dimension by introducing a, another color. Don't necessarily want to go nuts with it. And if if this were a character base, I would be making some of these decisions based on, you know, what is the character wearing or if there are other things in the environment and stuff. These are kind of in isolation. But let's get some green and try that on the one here. Oh, well, Kitty left, so I'll go back to palette B. I don't know what she's doing. She's wandering around. I think she's looking for a toy because she's all revved up from the cat. That is very green. I have a question on that decision, but let's do it. Let's assume that the red that's already on here will interact with that and neutralize it. I was painting a bunch of these for a game. Would I do this stuff? No, probably not. But since I did it on the Rocky and I was showing that, I thought it might be good for me to kind of show what I did there. Although that was like six years ago. So do I actually remember what I did there? No, not especially. I remember some of the specifics from painting the Rockies, but not all of them. All right, did that make a huge difference? I don't think so. Maybe adding just a little more. I'm concerned about creating the impression of that copper tarnish instead. So I probably should have used a less saturated green 
in that front. But now I know. And I guess we can put some of the green on the green one. Just, just cause. There are all kinds of gems and other special treasures in here that do things to be reflecting. It's not just the, you know, light and shadow color with uh, metallics. It's also what's around. Actually, that's not even true just with metallics. Um, it's just more obvious with metal objects than with not metal objects. I have this great picture of my husband's face he's wearing this like lime green shirt and you can see the lime green being reflected under his chin and that kind of thing is going around all the time but we just don't always you know perceive it color we're used to so unless it's something like really extreme it doesn't stand out to our eyes so it, in this case I don't know that the whole glazing step that I like to do made much of a difference, but here we are with a warm gold and a cooler gold, whichever one you think is more leprechaun-y. Um, I guess it depends on the leprechaun, what he was wearing. Here we got our, got our sample leprechaun. You can test them out next to each of these. This is just a little too red, I think. But the, the warmer gold would pop against the green more. So I would probably choose something like that for a leprechaun. But maybe someday, and especially if any of you ask me to, I'll come back and we'll figure out how to paint the rest of these little treasures. Like the goblet probably should be silver or copper. This could be like a pottery thing. Now there's a necklace there. There's some possibilities for more, practicing more things you have to do with bases. But for once, I'm gonna be kind to uh, Quindy and actually wrap up at five, uh, but only after she finds us a raid. Um, thank you all for joining me. I hope you had a great uh, St. Patrick's Day and wore green and did anything else that you might enjoy for that day. Um, and I don't, I don't know if you, I learned some things. I don't know if you learned some things, but I learned some things. So hopefully you did too. And hopefully I'll see you next week. Um, and yeah, Quindy's happy that uh, I'm going <laughs> to wrap up on time for once. So we'll see who she finds us for a raid. Oh, well, let's go back to Kitty for a minute. And we'll go full size kitty bee. Although we're watching her take a bath, so that's super exciting. You're welcome, to your Nico, Zachary, I am, and many thanks to uh, Quindy for all her assistance as ever. And we're going to be raiding Epic Duck Studios, so say hi, spread the reaper love, and I'll see you next time, hopefully with more cats. Bye, everyone. <laughs>